Hello, fourth graders. Mr. Buckham back with our second lesson in poetry. And today we're going to talk about the tone of a poem. It's kind of like the emotion that you feel when you listen to the poem. Um, if you look at pictures, photographs, sometimes they evoke an emotion, how you feel about that uh, picture. Um, it just depends on the colors, the shades, um, the environment that the picture is taken in. So much is the same when we're listening to a poem being read or reading a poem. And we call that voice. And you can see behind me the definition of voice. Voice is an author's tone personality or attitude in a text. So think about those previous poems that we were working with when we were identifying the elements of poetry. I think we had some tone going on there, some voice and some attitude, maybe about sitting uh, or standing or doing the dishes. When you are thinking about voice, there are questions that you want to ask yourself. How does the author feel in this poem? What's the mood of the author or the passage? What can you tell about the writer's personality from the text? And there's some adjectives that help us describe voice. Sad, happy, silly, snappy, mournful, excited, confident, urgent, serious. And so some examples of two different writers. Uh, one's a poet, Shel Silverstein. The other one uh, writes, uh, R.L. Stein writes scary movies or uh, books. And so, and Shel Silverstein is usually pretty happy, upbeat, silly. The first poem I'm going to use as an example of voice is called September. And as I'm reading it, you want to think about how does, what does the poem make you, how does the poem make you feel? And then think about words and phrases from the poem that gave you this feeling. And then last of all, what's, what's the overall tone of the poem? September, the golden rod is yellow. The corn is turning brown. The trees and apple orchards with fruit are bending down. Genation's bluest fringes are curling in the sun. In dusky pods, the milkweed, its hidden silk has spun. The sedges flaunt their harvest in every meadow nook. And asters by the brookside make asters in the brook. From dewy lanes at morning, the grape sweet orders rise. At noon, the roads all flutter with golden butterflies. By all these uh, lovely tokens, septem September days are here with summer's best of weather and autumn's best of cheer. And that was written by Helen Hunt Jackson. So when I think about how this poem made me feel, I thought about it being making me feel happy and light. And words that help me to think that are just how we're talking about the trees, the sun, the harvest, meadow, all of which bring really nice images of fall. And then the second half of the poem, there's lots of happiness describing golden butterflies, sweet odors, and lovely tokens. And then she ends September days as a mix of summer's best of weather and autumn's best of cheer. So when, I read, when I'm reading that, I'm really thinking that this is a happy and light poem um, of all the beautiful images that we see during the fall. Just a reminder that these poems, September and the next one that I'll be reading, The Sheaves, are found in the poetry packet that goes with the reading unit. Our next poem is called The Sheaves. And again, we want to think about how does the poem make you feel? 
which words or phrases from the poem gave you this feeling? And then what's the overall tone or voice of the poem? The sheaves were long the shadows of the wind had rolled. Green wheat was yielding to the change assigned. And as by some vast magic undivined, the world was turning slowly into gold. Fair days went on till another day. A thousand gold sheaves were lying there, shining and still, but not for long to stay, as if a thousand girls with golden hair might rise from where they slept and go away. And that was written by the poet Edwin Arlington Robinson. You'll probably agree with, with me that the sheaves was much different than September. It kind of had that somber, sad, urgent, slow oh, feeling to it. And some of the, the words and phrases that kind of led me to believe that was this one in particular, as if a thousand girls with golden hair might rise from where they slept and go away. Gave us a feeling of sadness that this golden beauty would soon wither away and that certainly is what the season brings us, isn't it? So we kind of we have an overall tone or voice of the kind of awe, sadness, and urgency of the changing of the seasons. Your assignment is to read The Alchemist in the City. I will read it for you, and you're to answer the questions in the worksheet about how it makes you feel, what are some phrases, words, that gave you this feeling, and then what's the overall tone or voice? The Alchemist in the City. My window shows the traveling clouds, leaves spent, new seasons, altered sky, the making and the melting crowds, the whole world passes, I stand by. And that was written by Gerard Manley Hopkins.